In a world that has literally gone mad, it's very common these days for people to feel extra irritable, angry about life in general, maybe more so about family members than we have in the past or friends that we have in the past or coworkers that we've had in the past. There's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of anger. There's a lot of rage. There's a lot of resentment. There's, there's just a lot of negativity in this world. And when we have this kind of negativity that's going all around us, especially if we're paying attention to the news on a daily basis, you're just driving that negativity home. You know, last night for the first time in a very long time, um, I went and just looked at headlines of the news. I haven't looked at headlines in the news since before COVID. And it was disgusting. I mean, everything that was posted was negative. There was not one positive thing going on. It was this person's angry at that person or this country. I mean, it was just insane, you know? And I'm going, well, no wonder why most of us are struggling so deeply with anger at friends or family members because of the fact that anger is ruling this world, frustration is ruling this world. So we've got to pull ourselves away from it. And I've got some thoughts. You know, if you have some anger going on, some resentment against family members, friends, coworkers, lovers, you may be able to benefit from this little podcast that I'm doing. By the way, you're tuned in to David Essel Live, the most positive podcast in the galaxy right here on buzzsprout.com. Just go to buzzsprout.com and you can Google David Essel and find thousands of hours of podcasts. We've just been doing it for so long, 35 years as a matter of fact. So there's a ton to listen to, according these, including these type of videos. So you know, the very first thing when we have anger at someone, especially if it's coming up on a regular basis, you know, is to say, you know, is it even necessary to talk to this person about it? Will they understand? Do they have the capability to get outside of their own opinion and to hear what we have to say that's creating the anger? <clears throat> and let's say that the anger or the frustration you have against a friend of yours or a family member or something like that in your mind is valid. And let's say that you do the valid test and you run it by 25 people who don't know you. That's the valid test. And they all say, oh my gosh, yes, you have a reason to be mad. So let's say that you have a justifiable reason to be mad. Well, the very first thing is, is that if I bring this up in any way whatsoever, is it even possible for this person to hear me? Are they logical enough? Are they emotionally regulated enough? When I say, hey, you, you know, you've done this three times, you've betrayed me three times, you've lied to me three times. I mean, we're talking about something that's a pattern that creates anger, not, not a one-off, not something that someone does one time. But this is something that this friend or this lover or this family member does on a regular basis. Maybe you have a tendency to set up meetings for lunch or dinner or something and they just don't show or they come an hour late or something. And so let's say you have a justifiable reason to be frustrated, angry, resentful, whatever. But the very first question is, was, will they even hear me? Is it even necessary to bring it up to them? You know, because if, if you've tried in the past and they haven't heard you, then it doesn't make a lot of sense to try in the future, does it? So then what do we do next? Well, the next thing we do is what I recommend is that, you know, you start to look at the amount of time you're spending with this person and you pull yourself back and you get emotionally grounded. And if this is something that really, really bothers you, you're gonna have to bring it up, right? And one of the things that you can do is you can start to pull back on the amount of time you spend with them. But I would be upfront and honest. I wouldn't do passive aggressive stuff. I'd say, hey, listen, you know, we've been spending a lot of time doing A, B, C, D, and E, and I've got other things I've got to pay attention to. I've got to get back into work, into working out or whatever. So while, you know, I've had enjoyable times with you, I'm going to have to be busy now. So maybe instead of getting together twice a week or three times a week, we'll get together once a week and see how that goes. Maybe by getting together once a week with this person, if it, unless it's someone you live with, obviously, um, maybe that's going to calm them down and maybe they'll start actually showing up. The second point is then to say, hey, listen, when we do get together once a week, you know, I'd really like to have you focus on being on time. It makes a big difference to me. It makes a big difference to our, our friendship, you know? And so if we say we're going to meet at noon, I'd really appreciate you being at noon. And if you're going to be 10 minutes late, just text me. But if you're going to be more than 10 minutes late, text me earlier so I don't show up at the restaurant and sit by myself. So that's just a really logical conversation. Now, if you're dealing with someone who's emotionally regulated, they can step back and go, you know, it's true. The last four times we've had lunch, I backed out three of the four or I've been a half an hour late. And so if there's someone who you're talking to logically, they can understand that. And they may even change their behavior. Now, if they don't change their behavior and it's something that really affects you, then you've got to decide, you know, is this person the person I need you to be with? Is this person a person I 
need to be friends with? You know, what do I need to do in this circumstance? Then the last thing I'm gonna mention is come to closure on your own. Come to closure on your own. We've been teaching this for 43 freaking years, for God's sake. You know, it, erroneously, people think we need to come to closure with our lover or our best friend or our family member, but it rarely happens. You know, when you try to come to closure with someone and say, hey, listen, you know, over the last couple of years, these problems continue to come up and it just isn't working. Our relationship isn't working. Our friendship isn't working. You know, whatever it might be. And I think it's time for us to take some time off because, you know, I find myself getting frustrated with you. It's not good for me and it's not good for you. So we come to closure like that, right? And, and we talk to that person, but the odds of them listening are so small. That's why I say we come to closure on our own. Come to closure on our own means that we follow a program of writing. We actually write letters to this person that we never send, expressing our frustration, our disappointment, our anger, our rage, our hurt, our resentment, whatever it might be. And we write those letters until we feel no more anger, rage, resentment. And then, believe it or not, we write letters of forgiveness to them, and they don't get those either. And in this process of writing your anger, and usually it takes a couple weeks to write every day, you know, dear David, you know, every time we go to lunch, you're always 20 minutes late. Every time I bring it up, you have some kind of an excuse, but you never apologize. It's like just like who you are, and it doesn't work for me. See, this is a letter that I would be writing to myself if I was the person doing that, right? It doesn't work for me. It makes me frustrated. I brought it up to you 20 times. Every time I bring it up, you blow it off. So I'm just going to let this relationship go. I will start to pull back on the amount that I text you, call you, see you, and I will just move into a new direction. Now, this is what we would write in the letter, right? We would put everything out on, on paper. And then when we've gotten that where we're bored, we've been writing these letters and we're bored as hell, then we start going to forgiveness. You know, dear David, I completely forgive you for, you know, never being on time or showing up late to, to lunches, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I'm going to move on. I'm going to start a new life and I'm going to bring in some new people into my life. But I just wanted to let you know that I have forgiven you and I'm moving on. Now, when you get done with all that exercise and you feel emotionally regulated and you feel calm, you can then go ahead and send a text or an email to the person saying whatever you want to say. If you want to be honest, but if you're going to be honest, be loving, or you just may let the relationship fade. And if they don't contact you and you don't contact them, there's nothing wrong with that. As long as you do the closure in writing, because if you don't do the closure, you're writing, you're going to carry the resentments forward and you may actually carry it into the next relationship. Listen, if I can help you at all, come to talkdavid.com. Remember, we have four books that are absolutely free that you can get that might be able to help you move forward in a great direction too. But if you're struggling in relationships, let's work together. You know, about 75% of the people I'm working with, it has something to do with relationships right now. Relationships are a mess, but we can help and we can help move you in the right direction. Everything is at talkdavid.com. I'm David Essel. Have a beautiful beautiful thing.